uh, you very well know that uh, semiconductor industry uh, with the uh, recent advancements in last decade or so so the processing uh, power as well the hardware compatibility uh, and the software development has taken uh, a huge leap forward so we'll be today uh, in in this uh, a very large uh, very wide topic we'll be covering the basic uh, uh, processing techniques and more more importantly uh, what kind of uh, embedded uh, like we need to uh, decide what kind of hardware and software uh, we want to use for our specified problem to to make some uh, project or uh, to solve our uh, given problem by any industry or any any other uh, ap- from any other application uh, what are the considerations uh, to to use various different embedded processing techniques uh, both software and hardware okay so my uh, i am baljeet singh i am working as a scientist uh, in central scientific instruments organization it is a csir laboratory uh, it's uh, in chandigarh uh, it's nearby to uh, very nearby to ni triple tr uh, who are the hosts for this short term course so uh, and uh, uh, talking about the topic of today uh, for this session uh, uh, can uh, before going into the various processing techniques uh, we should have a uh, overview at what what is called what is actually uh, an embedded system and uh, how is it different from a complete system when we talk about any system design uh, so Uh, in this uh, slide visible to you right now uh, you can see that we have taken the example of human body as a complete system it's a system made by uh, nature or god we can say but it's a uh, most perfect uh, we, uh, system available in this uh, uh, in this world uh, uh, and it will be the per, um, perfect most system uh, always available with us and we can always take many uh, motivations and many uh, like hint, hints from how nature has evolved and how our body has uh, been designed and can fit those uh, hints fit those ideas into our existing embedded system design to make them even more superior or better so just taking an example uh, the embedded system we can say the the processing part the processors and the peripheral uh, devices are shown over here see uh, this part over here is the the controller or we can say the processor module so this is the brain of the complete system this uh, these are uh, first kind of sensors which we have we can say the cameras or the distance sensors uh, these are uh, microphones you, uh, uh, the auditory sensors we can say the nose uh, that means olfactory or the gas sensor it has arrays of thousands of various different gas sensors uh, the you all might be aware also that sensing capabilities of the gas sensors very advanced gas sensor which are available uh, the man made gas sensor which are available in the market even today is nowhere near the actual the sensing capability of a human nose as yet and uh, uh, so much complex this system is i uh, we can't even imagine that uh, uh, science can even reach uh, very close to this kind of system so this is uh, auditory actuators that means the speech uh, th- these were all sensors these the uh, me- meaning the out uh, input to the system and this is uh, one one of the output auditory actuator 
plus it has the taste sensor as well as the uh, food that means battery recharging port uh, the way we get energy to work so and some of the uh, some of the features uh, which we need to take uh, utmost care is the uh, ergonomic design that means the final uh, out, outlook of the system the fit and finish of the system and the safety aspects of the system as you know that these eyebrows uh, save uh, our eyes uh, from dust and uh, other uh, pollens and everything and they like in this design they have their own uh, outlook uh, specific features also so these kind of things also we need to take care of while designing any system if you let us say you are working in some team wherein there are few mechanical engineers few uh, electronics electrical engineers and some instrumentation engineers and then you have uh, your application specific team uh, which are actually working uh, or uh, uh, in the field Uh, maybe maybe whatever industry or field you can say chemical food or any other bio uh, social biological any industry so uh, all the all the complete team when when they will have uh, uh, the design meeting for uh, making starting the system design the complete system design then we need to take care of, uh, of all these things what kind of parameters we need to measure what kind of output our system need to give like uh, the audio output uh, so in this way any other output any motor or any valve we have to operate or uh, what different sensors and their specifications and uh, we'll discuss this in detail in uh, Uh, the coming slides also and uh, accordingly what kind of uh, controller uh, or processor hardware we need to choose and what should be the final out outlook of that system uh, color features uh, ingress protection weather proofing and all so all these things need to be kept in mind while design designing any any complete system uh, the complete system design team uh, embedded system is one major part of the design okay so uh, coming to the design considerations this is uh, very important you can take note of it also or maybe you can take the screenshot of the of your screen in the, in the end uh, so what all points need to be taken care of when designing any any embedded system or any com any complete system for that matter so first of all uh, uh, the first parameter or and most important parameter is sensor characteristics so out of mm, many of the basic sensor characteristics which you might have studied in your theoretical classes sometimes um, like uh, we we talk about accuracy precision and all uh, two of the very major parameters uh, are resolution the, uh, this uh, you all might be aware with the with this term resolution that means uh, how close two values can be Uh, uh so that a sensor can uh, distinguish between those two values and time response this means when given any any input or any change in the input uh how quickly a sensor uh, can respond to it and can give the output according to the input provided to that sensor okay so um, in any of the practical application when we need to choose uh, the the we need to start designing the system first of all we need to ch uh, check the uh, application and accordingly what resolution we require for our specific application and how quick our sensor should be 
so based on these two parameters we need to choose we need to do the sensor selection okay then uh, actuation mechanism uh, if if our system requires any kind of output to be generated so what what kind of output is that is it is it electromechanical is it uh, a movement of a motor is it some valve opening which we need to control uh, or is it some robotic arm uh, we which we that we need to uh, specifically move uh, in uh, to some uh, to move uh, the end end effector of the robotic arm to some specific location so degrees of freedom means uh, in how many directions in how many uh, ways a specific uh, end end effector can move end effector means if in a robotic arm uh, the the last point of the robotic arm which is actually moving and reaching out to some places is called end effector just like if we take the example of human body our uh, our if we consider our arms our our fingers are the end effectors in in the case of human uh, arm so similarly uh, there can be any robotic uh, arm placed uh, working in any industrial environment wherein it might be uh holding some spray paint gun which might be painting some automobile part of the uh, uh car chassis which are being manufactured in that industry okay so uh, moving and uh, uh, controlling the movement of that spray paint uh, gun uh, we can say that we require specific we require that uh, control of all the di different degrees of freedom that means x y z direction and the uh, rotation angle also uh, theta alpha all those angles roll pitch and yaw also so and and if it is some and in case of uh, more common industrial requirement when we need to uh, move some conveyor belt or some pulley uh, with with some motor then what kind of torque requirement is there from our actuator that means our motor uh, how much torque is uh, required so those kind of requirements we need to first understand uh, or maybe if you are designing some Mm, some rover land rover or some other robot then also you need to understand what, on what kind of terrain it it uh, you are uh, uh, you you will be uh, using that robot so accordingly you have to find out the torque requirements okay so sensor uh, we have, we have uh, we have uh, let's say you are a design team uh, who are uh, responsible for the embedded and other other electronic hardware design so you have selected the sensor accordingly and you have uh, selected the actuator uh, also uh, properly according to your application then then comes the embedded system platform selection so based on uh, how how quick how um, agile or how fast operation you require from your system uh, first of all you need to you need to uh, record you need to receive the data that means you need to sample the data which is coming from the sensors so uh, uh, that means you need to take care of the sampling rate Uh, how quick uh, like how many samples in one second your system or your adcs can um, uh, like uh, can record or can capture we can say okay and then uh, uh, along with the sample sampling rate another uh, major uh, important aspect is Uh, the resolution of adc or that uh, like uh, we can say uh, how many bits uh, of the uh, uh, how many digital sam sampling bits of the adc are there in your system inbuilt or maybe you can use separate uh, additional adc so sampling rate as well as the resolution of the uh, data you need to 
take care uh, of both of these things uh, you must be aware of both these terms but uh, just to if there is somewhat confusion uh, just to make it a bit more clear we can uh, take a simple example in in a layman term we can say um, if 10 volts of uh, signal you need to um, measure uh, uh, let us say the maximum voltage can be 10 volts so adc resolution uh, will decide that up to how many decimal digits you can uh, measure that voltage that means 9.45 and uh, further how, how much more uh, digits you can capture and sampling rate will decide that how quickly the 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 change in the voltage signal which is uh, being generated in the real world environment from your sensor how quickly that rate can be captured so uh, if there are 1000 samples to be collected in one second that means 1 kilo sample per second sampling rate is being is is used so um, that means even if a value of voltage or whatever value is changing in changing for 1000 times uh, in one second still you can have a fair amount of idea about that value but at at the same uh, time if 5 kilo sample that means 5000 samples per second is your sampling rate let us say you you decide to purchase a bit uh, costly and uh, uh, high sampling rate um, uh, adc so what will happen is if if uh, uh, now also 1000 samples uh, 1000 different values of voltage are coming in one second but because you have higher sampling rate so uh, in in basic signal processing uh, while studying basic signal processing we all have studied the nyquist criteria that means the uh, maximum frequency of change of uh, uh, the uh, how quickly some data is changing the some signal is changing we need to at least keep the sampling frequency at, at the Uh, twice frequency that means if 1000 values are changing in one second of from certain sensor output uh, so you need to at least take 2000 values theoretically but practically at least 4 to 5000 values you need you need to take so uh, uh, using some uh, um, uh, costly adc in this application will give you better results sometimes Uh, if the sampling rate was even lower than 1000 and uh, like maybe 200 samples per second uh, 200 times the value were changing so 1000 sample per second would also have been sufficient for your specific application so uh, costlier is uh, not always better in in every everywhere but uh, in our embedded systems or electronics specifically costlier is not not better uh, always you need to optimize uh, according to your uh, application or you need to uh, decide according to it, uh, to your uh, requirements okay uh, when we finish this specific slide we will uh, stay at this slide for uh, one or two more minutes and we'll we can have any type of question regarding to uh, whatever we are discussing right now because this is important if we majorly cover all these things properly and you start designing your embedded system keeping all of these in in uh, mind then rest all uh, theoretical aspects can be learned or the data data sheets can be studied that that is uh, not a big issue embedded system uh, design first of all the platform uh, we have, we have selected we we have tried to uh, figure it out then uh, to design any embedded system uh, programming optimization how how well 
uh, a sampling or or data processing algorithm can be written that means uh, in uh, by using minimum machine cycles uh, the similar task similar uh, kind of output if can be achieved uh, so that we can say that program will be uh, that program will be more optimized uh, which whatever program uses less ma less machine cycles for the for uh, completing the same task a very uh, very common example which you uh, all might be asking in your vivas also from uh, the students or we all might have also uh, faced this question in it in various uh, interviews uh, that if you need to uh, decide whether some uh, some value stored in some specific register is even or odd how can you do it so some of the people uh, uh, um, uh, generally make a program of uh, division by two and checking the remainder which gets stored in some other register and some other people just do the bitwise operation and check the least significant bit so this is one very common example that by just checking the least significant bit is zero or one uh, you can you used one bit bitwise operation instead of one byte operation of division okay so these type of programming optimization in complex programs they are these are uh, very important and uh, that is why uh, it's uh, sometimes we uh, we see some examples also while the students are getting uh various uh, placements in different industries uh, there are various programming and coding challenges whosoever does it quickly and does it optimally uh, they are, they get uh, a lot more uh, salary packages than than few other of their colleagues okay so in uh, in embedded system hardware and software design uh, this this coding optimization programming optimization plays a very major role and this becomes a specific vertical in all the embedded design industries so um, this is one one such uh, area wherein uh, the academic academic people when we are working on any problems uh, when we are not concerned about uh, the actual implementation of the um, uh, the design whatever we are making um, we tend to forget or we tend to ignore this this uh, specific uh, concern uh, which is power or backup requirement that that means as as per the demand of the application you need to first figure out whether uh, you need to uh, place this whatever uh, system you are designing you need uh, what kind of application it is uh, it will be used in whether it has to be placed uh, in some uh, harsh environment or in some uh, outdoor environment or whether it ha it will be uh, inst installed somewhere inside some building where uh, pa uh, always power backup is always there if it is uh, it has to be installed in outdoor environments then you need to uh, uh, very uh, rigorously test for its backup uh, power that means the battery with whatever you are using you need to test it uh, for various cycles uh, for uh, it should at least last uh, twice the time which is required for the specific operation or specific application and uh, along with this uh, battery power you need to we nowadays uh, we, we can provide uh, many auxiliary power sources just like uh, renewable energy sources solar or wind or other uh, 
power sources which can uh, recharge the battery online on the spot and uh, thereby making it uh, uh, helpful to use this system uh, like once install the system and use it uh, throughout and uh, uh, with the uh, with the advancement in iot techniques internet of thing techniques uh, the processing power the communication power uh, requirements are uh, have drastically reduced and uh, there are various studies where in one uh, lithium ion battery cell uh, a small battery uh, uh, can power some stand alone unit which is iot enabled for uh, some studies even show that uh, that battery can power that single unit for up to 10 years but uh, uh, practically in in our own sets csio uh, setup also we have not uh, uh, reached up to that kind of optimal level because of uh, various hardware constraints and various power losses which happen but uh, surely we'll uh, also reach because all all the focus is nowadays on optimizing the power requirements so then data presentation requirement that means whether the data has to be displayed or whether it needs to be communicated uh, to through some cloud server to uh, any end user or on some uh, hum hmi interface that means human machine interface or in any in any central control uh, uh, this uh, unit or any other central control station uh, on 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 computer or laptop or mobile phone uh, or on the uh, on on the uh, this uh, basic displays how how in how many different ways you need to uh, represent the data and its interpretation uh, for the end user or for the uh, for the operator of the specific devices so as per the application and requirements so that that needs to be uh, um, like designed and that needs to be decided okay then uh, uh, along with the presentation uh, in what in what protocol in what format uh, the data needs to be transferred and uh, it needs to be stored and uh, uh, for how how long for how much time uh, the data backup needs to be uh, kept uh, online and offline both and uh, if let us say uh, some device or some system is uh, connected to the internet and if uh, internet supply gets disconnected somehow uh, for how much time it will be storing the data in offline mode and uh, if that system is uh, being used in the industry so, so making the data logs and storing the data Uh, present uh, in various csv or other formats and then then discarding the data uh, from the system uh, this all needs to be automated and uh, according to this requirement initially on uh, with the while selecting the platform and the peripheral and the, we need to decide on the memory requirement then uh, comes the final aspect which we uh, discussed while discussing the uh, um, eyebrows uh, by in human body uh, the ergonomics or the safety features or uh, we can say the hardware design uh, or the weather resistance of the device uh, you all might have heard that uh, the mobile phones coming nowadays are Uh, ip68 rated or something like that so ip is in ingress protection and uh, uh, the other two numerical characters give various kind of uh, water resistance and splash resistance or and what level of uh, water pressure they can withstand 
so accordingly for how many uh, minutes or how many uh, how much time so uh, so th these all uh, uh, claims need to be uh, uh, certified from various uh, uh, specific uh, ip certification agencies so if you uh, according to your application requirement if you need to uh, use your system outdoors so you you have to um, design it accordingly so that it gets uh, it becomes weather resistant and uh, it becomes safe and even ergonomically it becomes outlook wise it becomes presentable and uh, 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 perfect uh, fit and finish wise and then you need to uh, get it certified according to your requirements from the agencies various agencies uh, which will uh, check verify your claims regarding to weather and other resistance okay so uh, if any in in your chat window or in your uh, Oh. Uh, or you can unmute yourself and ask any question uh, regarding to uh, this the whatever we have discussed up to now Uh, somebody uh, sent a message that not audible properly oh. it was a few time few time ago now now uh, nagendra sir uh, am i audible now properly Okay. Any any query uh, up to now? If anybody has, please uh, you can ask or you can uh, type in the chat section also. Yeah, if uh, there are no queries up now, we shall move forward. Uh, uh, are there no queries because everything is very uh, sorted and easy to understand or I'm not at all making any sense? Oh, how many participants are there? Well, I think we shall move forward. Uh, so moving forward, components of any embedded system. 
majorly uh, it will be having hardware it will be having a main application software and it has real time operating system uh, artos uh, so hardware uh, includes uh, the processors the processor timers interrupt controller io devices memories ports etc which are all the part of single unit nowadays we call it uh, system on chip uh, and uh, it has main application software uh, which may perform concurrently the series of tasks or multiple tasks that means uh, it can handle many various uh, tasks at the same time just like our mobile phones it can be downloading some data uh, at the same time you can do web uh, browsing uh, Uh, and at the same time uh, if uh, at that particular moment any messages uh, um, you receive any message you can answer to those messages also so various different tasks a single uh, uh, system can do uh, because of their application software then it has real time operation operating system artos uh this this means it will uh, give uh, like this decides how uh, how much uh, specific time bound a task is uh, to define the way the system work which supervise the application software uh, this uh, this artos uh, further uh, have, have different uh, like we can say uh, Uh, hard real time system and soft real time system hard real time systems yeah, are the system wherein even the delay of certain milliseconds is not permissible like uh, very specific kind of operation is being uh, done with with this kind of embedded system so the operating system which is uh, 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 which is uh, governing that embedded system Uh, is called hard re- hard real time operating system and uh, there are certain system wherein some some kind of time delay is permissible uh, those are called uh, soft real time operating systems okay so these are major components which are uh, which you, you uh, sometimes you are aware or even not aware they are always present in any embedded system so embedded system con- constraints this means uh, what kind of uh, uh, limitations are there for any embedded systems so accordingly we need to uh, uh, design the software uh, of that uh, specific system so available system memory we need to take care while uh, um uh, process like while designing the system we need to uh, take care the uh, take care of the available system memory uh, and we need to uh, design some uh, all the system uh, uh, such that uh, around uh, 50, 40 to 50% memory we shall try that 40 to 50% memory should always be available free while the system is uh operating and then <coughs> then available processor speed this means uh, this uh, you uh, you uh, hear it uh, about it a lot of times uh, certain gigahertz and all so this kind of uh, uh, these uh, operations are also uh, designed uh, keeping in view that uh, the processor speed which is available should always be like uh, more than around double that means 50% uh, the system should be operating at the 50% of the available capacity or even lesser so and this means if if we if, if our requirements are of 1 gigahertz system so we may need to take 2 gigahertz kind of processor or maybe uh, even at 1.3 gigahertz uh, 
the if instead of 32 bit processor we can use we can try and opt for 64 bit processor because that itself automatically kind of increases the uh, processing capability to to double so then there is another constraint wherein we need to limit the power dissipation that means how much power is uh, lost in uh, in uh, in heat or in other uh, type of uh, like uh, noises johnson noise and all noises so we need to limit that power dissipation power losses Uh, just just a second i getting an official call just just uh, hold for a moment Uh, yes uh, pardon me uh, i had some urgent call so uh, just okay. just let me open the yeah so uh, so how to optimize these uh, uh, these constraints and uh, we need uh, and how to limit the power dissipation when running the system continuously uh, in cycles of wait for events run stop and wake up that this what does this mean uh, we need to uh, write the software accordingly that uh, the software should be designed such that when system is continuously running uh, so uh, 
and then uh, when there is no new event so, so at that time we should uh, like stop the processor go go it to uh, make it to go to sleep and then wake it up whenever there is some some kind of uh, event and when there is certain uh, interrupt or something like that so uh, according the uh, Th this will reduce the power uh, uh, usage uh, uh, quite considerably then uh, what makes the embedded system different uh, first of all uh, it ha it should be operating in real time and then only the embedded system is useful if your <clears throat> if something some event is happening and uh, if you cannot capture the photograph of that event at, uh, on the spot then there is no use of your uh, uh, mobile phone or any other camera any any embedded system for that matter then their sizes embedded system generally even if they are used in industry or uh, uh, anywhere else the size of the system we can say is uh, quite less as compared to the uh, dedicated computers or all then the cost of the system cost if we can't say that uh, specifically it will be always on the lower side as compared to any other full fledged uh, com computational system but we can say the cost is very competitive because embedded system needs to be produced in masses if we design any mobile phone or any other even a small charger uh, for any mobile phone any uh, which, uh, which has is having some embedded system smart capabilities or any embedded control unit for any automobile car or mo motorcycle uh they needs to need to be produced in masses so their cost becomes very competitive then uh, uh the time the time time uh, we can uh, like consider time in two ways one is uh, that uh, time of designing and uh, another is time uh, in which the embedded system technologies and embedded system updates uh, changes so quickly so they need to be designed very quickly and they should be capable of upgrading updating themselves the 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 system designing team also and the hardware also should have capability of upgradation then reliability uh, this means uh, uh, how much uh, like stable or how much uh, like uh, harsh condition this embedded system can uh, 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 manage can handle then safety safety from the software point of view that uh, how much uh, like our uh, um, this uh, one one is that uh, um, uh, our data should be safe and another is from hardware point of view that uh, ergonomically de the design should be uh, should not be like uh, uh, such that uh, this system Uh, uh becomes like we can say that somebody can take uh, some components out of the system as well as the system uh, the electrical power from the electrical power aspect uh, it should be properly safe to operate also then energy uh, lower the energy requirement of the system better the system is uh if if some system can use very less energy uh, to operate then this that that system automatically becomes uh, better than all the other count, uh, counterparts and the security data data security network security uh, internet protocol security and other or various aspects of uh, ne uh, security uh, should be covered should be like taken care of while designing the system it it it, it this makes uh, this embedded system more vulnerable to threats and that is why it becomes very different than the other system because it needs to be made more secure than the regular regular systems 
then there are various type of systems small scale embedded system this can be uh, like single 8 bit or 16 bit microcontroller uh, hardware and software are less complex they can be battery operated usually c embedded c is used for developing these systems and uh, the need to limit power dissipation when system is running continuously uh, uh, which we have already discussed whenever the system is running continuously and it is not getting any any uh, signal or any interrupt then we can send the system to sleep or uh, deep sleep mode then the programming various programming tools which are used to uh, uh, write the code for such kind of small systems are uh, editor program editors assembler and cross assemblers <clears throat> coming to the next type of system medium scale embedded system it can have one or multiple uh, few single uh, few 16 or th uh, 32 bit microcontroller or dsps or uh, reduced in instruction set computers uh, both hardware and software complexity uh, are much more than the small scale embedded systems then programming tools uh, uh, we have to take care of a real time operating system we uh, we need to design specifically then source code engineering tool simulator debugger and ides are used so uh, those of you who are familiar with arduino or uh, node mcu uh, uh, know that uh, you use integrated development environment for arduino coding so it is we can say it is not even the uh, arduino is not completely uh, so much complex that it becomes medium scale embedded system but it is um, certainly much more complex and uh, bigger or better than uh, small scale embedded systems <clears throat> then uh, sophisticated embedded system so they have a lot huge uh, hardware and software complexity and uh, uh, they require scalable processor or configurable processor and uh, plas pld's programming logic arrays and uh, uh, like this means that uh, according to uh, the uh, the system requirement and the application requirement so the processor can be scaled uh, to to be used for very complex task and uh, can be configured to be used for uh, various different applications and uh, um, accordingly you know that programming uh, programming logic arrays can be used to uh, form and uh, make uh, various logics and where wherein very high speed computing is required so constrained by the processing speed available in their hardware unit so um, the speed requirement the application requirements uh, are constrained by the uh, the hardware processing speed uh, otherwise software wise or coding wise there is no limit uh, the programming tools for such system are not readily available we need to design specifically uh, uh, so we need to develop a specific programming tool because they are scalable processor so uh, as per the scale of application or uh, use uh, so we need to design the firmware accordingly <coughs> then uh, coming to embedded processors special microprocessor and microcontroller often called embedded processor and embedded processor is used when fast processing fast context switching at uh, atomic alu operations are needed so atomic alu operations are like uh, atomic uh, uh, from the from atom we all understand that it is the smallest unit uh not nowadays in chemistry but here this this term has been derived from uh this uh, keeping in view this aspect only 
सो एटॉमिक अर्थमेटिकल लॉजिकल यूनिट ऑपरेशन आर द स्मॉलेस्ट सिंगल ऑपरेशन विच इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ अदर ऑपरेशन विच कैन बी इंडिपेंडेंटली ऑपरेटेड सो वेर वेरी फास्ट एटोमिक एरियो ऑपरेशन एंड फास्ट कॉन्टेक्ट स्विचिंग हैज टू बी डन सो एम्बेडेड प्रोसेसर इज यूज फ्यू एग्जाम्पल आर ऑल्सो शेयर्ड then digital signal processor dsp uh, uh, is a single chip vlsi unit so general uh, when when we use it as a general purpose processor so we can say that it is a single chip very large scale integration uh, in unit so it includes the computational capabilities of microprocessor and multiply and accumulate units mac uh, like it is uh, like much more advanced uh, version of earth uh, alus so dsp has large number of applications such as image processing audio video and telecommunication processing system it is used when signal processing functions are to be processed very fast okay so there are many other examples uh, except these also so now coming to application specific system processor so this this means application specific system processor is dedicated to specific uh, task and provides a faster solution it may not work for all a different uh, task or different application but for that particular application if it is specifically designed uh so it will be uh, handling that task very uh, very quick well in very less time and assp is used an as an additional processing unit for running the application in place of using embedded software uh you might have heard and nowadays there are uh, various co processors for only for the camera processing in mobile phones or any other um, any other uh, uh, embedded processing uh, uh, used in many laptops and mobile phones so they are for they are used for very specific application so they are uh, like example of uh, assp uh multi purpose processor system using general purpose processors uh multiple processors are used when a single processor does not meet the needs of different task so uh, wherein there are various different task which need to be uh, uh, like uh, taken care of the so various general purpose processors can be used uh, to handle various different task and uh, then the operation of all the processor are synchronized to obtain an optimum performance so a central processor can uh, can uh, give the uh, signal like can give the instruction to all the processors uh, which can be called as slave processors also in this case and they all they all are synchronized to to handle the various operations uh, in a synchronous manner so uh, coming to moore's law you all might have studied it in uh, uh, in theory but uh, we'll see one one uh, like uh, we can say how this law has been defied or we can say has been surpassed by the current generation processors and uh, embedded systems uh, so first of all getting somewhat uh, basic information about this um, th this uh, uh, described a long term trend in history uh, of computing hardware uh, Uh, this trend was first observed by intel's co-founder jo uh, jordan e moore uh, almost uh, 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 the majorly this law said that uh, 
since the invention of integrated circuit ic in uh, 1958 the number of transistor that can be placed inexpensively on an integrated circuit has increased exponentially doubling approximately every 2 years so uh, in the next slide we will be discussing how moore's law has been defined or surpassed by after 2010 uh, by the advancement of various uh, embedded system techniques uh, Uh, on on your x axis, x -axis there are uh, this is the time year and uh, uh, these are the number of transistors so you can see that uh, that uh, number of transistors uh, and uh, accordingly the memory uh, starting from 1 kilobyte uh, in 1969 or 70 when a 4004 uh, processor was uh, first uh, developed or we can say uh, designed uh, to 4 GB and so on and so forth. And, and this inbuilt uh, memory now has been uh, increased. And uh, beyond this 2010, the transistor per die, this transistor per die, uh, the number has uh, been increasing even more like uh, uh, as per Moore's law, uh, it it doubled every two years approximately. Now, in every two years, it increases more than even double. So, uh, like uh, got this uh, major point uh, why we are discussing this with the advancement of embedded systems uh, and uh, their processing capabilities in the hardware uh, was getting challenged because uh, as you can see that uh, here we discussed that uh, constrained by the processing speed available in their hardware unit in the sof sophisticated embedded systems also uh, hardware uh, was having constraint because software and coding have become so much optimized that uh, the hardware requirement is increasing uh, 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 very quickly. So, uh, so the designing companies as well as the uh, like the silicon technology as well as uh, uh, manufacturing processes has become so advanced that. Uh, Moore's law has also been uh, surpassed now. Uh, we have uh, gone beyond that, uh, that uh, uh, twice in two years uh, law. So Moore's law drives the development of system in chip architectures. Uh, the growing number of transistor on and system on chip drives the trend toward more register transistor logic blocks on the chip as you can see that uh, in past uh, the system on chip had uh, single processor memory and few rtl function and few rtl input outputs now uh, there are uh, 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 this processor memory uh, uh, central processor memory digital signal processor again uh, uh, auxiliary memory various number of resistor transistor logics rtls and the accordingly rtl ios uh, and these all different logics can handle various different processes and other different signals So now coming to the last section of uh, our discussion uh, on the embedded applications. So there are uh, wherever, uh, like we right now also, this short term course we are doing online, wherever you see uh, around you in our high household, right from your kitchen to, to various different uh, appliances which are there in your household or your offices uh, we see embedded system everywhere in our cars 
motorcycles everywhere so household application microwave ovens television dvd players recorders audio players ICs integrated system in aircraft and missiles, telephones, electric and electronic motor controllers. Then in the main microcontroller unit, which uh, controls the engine in automobiles, um, various calculators, PlayStation, video games, medical equipments, and musical e in equipments instruments. Everywhere embedded system uh, is uh, playing a major role in the control control as a control uh, like as a brain of all the systems. Okay, so automotive embedded systems uh, today's high end automobile uh, may have hundred micro microprocessors. For four bit microcontroller, check the seat belt. Um, microcontroller run dashboard devices. Uh, 16 or 32 bit microcontroller controls the engines. Then uh, embedded system. Uh, these, these are a few properties of the embedded systems. Uh, <coughs> These embedded system <laughs> react on the environment at the speed of the environment. Uh, they have often embedded system uh, 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 handle the real time requirements. So and they are uh, embedded systems are tasks mostly task specific they are designed for one single task they have often their requirement is to be uh, power efficient because they need to be used standalone and as an independent unit so they have to be power efficient mostly uh, in most of the application areas so as we discussed earlier, they are mass products. <coughs> no one unit of embedded system is designed for uh, uh, like just just uh, for one or two units. If they are used for automobile, car, mobile phones, or any other factory or industry, so they uh, have to. They are produced in masses, and they have to be. Uh, cost effective so they must be uh, reliable also that means the use of uh, like uh, they can they should be able to be used for many years without any failure so now coming to the uh, 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 this uh, comparison, if we compare various uh, embedded, uh, like uh, embedded system, um, uh, we can say uh, on, if we have to compare them on the scale of their uh, de design capability as well as processing capability. So on the very lower side, uh, of the performance, there comes the microprocessors, uh, and the, uh, you can see that on x-axis uh, there there is uh, the performance. The so performance-wise, also microprocessor are uh, lower on on in terms of performance, but they uh, they have uh, they the time required to design any microprocessor-based system is also less and then comes the uh, programmable logic so uh, so the programmable logic devices just like uh, cpld is complex pro programmable logic devices and fpgas field programmable gate arrays they uh, uh, pld devices are much more complex than the basic microprocessors 
so they are better in performance also but they require more time in their design uh, somewhat more complex is the uh, uh, gate arrays they they are higher uh, much better in performance than even pld's uh, and their design time is also accordingly higher so then then comes the application specific ic's uh, standard cell design uh, uh, kind of techniques they they are uh, even more better at performances uh, and uh, uh, similarly uh, the design time also increases then full custom design this means according to the application and according to the memory and power requirement they will be designed uh, customized and uh, so their performance will be very optimized uh, but because they are completely customized according to the requirement so the time also will be uh, the time required to design uh, the system and realize the system will be much more than the uh, lower and uh, simpler versions of embedded systems <coughs> therefore microprocessors are used as key components in an embedded system programmable logic and uh, application specific ic's asics are used for critical parts in the design and uh, objective for an embedded system designer is to find the cheapest solution that meets the requirement mm, do not use a pentium when you only want to control a freezer this means if your requirement is of uh, 8 bit just com normal microcontroller then you do not you don't need to use a uh, full fully developed pentium processor for your Uh, basic simple kind of application so uh, this uh, um, emphasis on the optimization of your uh, uh, your design based on the application which you are going to uh, <coughs> address <coughs> <laughs> how much hardware do we uh, the challenges in embedded system design how much hardware do we need how big is the cpu or memory how do we meet our deadlines uh, that means uh, <clears throat> the design cycle uh, the time required uh, how how to reduce the time uh, of uh, designing any system faster hardware or cleverer software that means uh, we should buy more advanced hardware or we can optimize uh, the performance by making a very uh, optimized very good software coding so uh, then how do we minimize uh, power turn off unnecessary logic reduce memory excesses so minimize power can be done by these two methods the uh, why we have kept these as question marks can there be any other methods and can these two modes or methods we can say uh, uh, like uh, be used everywhere and uh, what can be the demerits of uh, turning off the logic and um, reducing the direct memory addresses uh, any uh, if like uh, in according to your application requirement in your application maybe sometimes um, one of these cannot be done so this you have to decide according to your application uh, uh, some some of the application require Uh, very uh, like hard real time operation so uh, in those kind of systems um, even uh, like uh, using more power will be uh, <coughs> that uh, permissible but uh, wasting even some few microsecond millisecond of the time will not be acceptable <coughs> so 
so challenges in the design of embedded system while we are designing the embedded system uh, these kind of challenges or questions we need to answer does it really work is the specification correct whatever we are designing is the specification of the design correct then uh, does the implementation meet the specification how do we test for real time characteristics how do we test on real data how do we work on the system uh, observability and controllability observability means uh, at any point of time if you are looking you are giving any type of uh, uh, specific input <coughs> you are able to uh, um check or you are able to uh, have a look uh, have a check at all the states of the system uh, like uh, if this is the system has uh, various different units how uh, and you give a specific input the output of all the units uh, you can measure indiv individually and you can check whether uh, is there any issue or any uh, problem in any of the output Uh, of any unit and controllability means uh, 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 like back uh, it, controllability refers uh, this term refers with the uh, in relation to the output this means uh, if you give inputs to individual unit of a system and uh, you check the uh, you have to check the output so the desired output as per your uh, um, uh, application as as per your design if if you are giving individual inputs to various different units which form the various different states of the system um, in the control system you might have read this state space uh, uh, architecture state space uh, th theories uh these terms come from uh, that that uh, background so you you give the uh, the uh, <coughs> certain fixed inputs to the various states or various units and then uh, you must be able to uh, get the desired output this means controllability <coughs> and what is our development platform that means the software selection and uh, optimizing the uh, software uh, okay so all these challenges you you even you might be feeling that uh, your student small small student projects or uh, very small uh, like some robotics or some other uh, uh, kind <coughs> uh, some other <coughs> Uh, uh this final year project of your student uh, there in uh, you don't need to take care of all these things but if if actually we uh, consider all these points while designing any of the system while selecting the hardware the microcontroller then you will find that you you were able to make and design very optimized system very uh, like uh, 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 no unnecessary uh, hardware or or software uh, has to be designed and uh, <coughs> the system was working very perfectly you will see if you take care of all these points okay so these are all the embedded processing techniques uh, from the design consideration point of view and from the application point of view so uh, as of now uh, for the today's this this course uh, from the design consideration uh, and uh, embedded application uh, 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 this much uh, uh, i'll uh, uh, stop at uh, this point and we will discuss right now you can ask any of the question any of the query uh, or you can uh, give any suggestion from your side based on what we have just discussed uh, you can share any of your example your experience while making any student project or any other embedded system design whether you faced any difficulty in 
in um, optimizing the memory requirement or hardware requirement or any other uh, issues uh, and yeah, or you can ask your specific queries for your project and um, pro, uh, your specific projects and we can <coughs> discuss accordingly uh thank you from uh, my side uh, for this patient listening and uh, we will uh, if you have any any queries you can ask right now uh, and uh,